afternoon everyone it's Imogen Edmonds at Red Wing Solutions we are the UK's number one HR for early years specialists providing support for day nurseries preschools out of our clubs across the UK so today I'd like to record a video for you to help you manage short-term absenteeism um, over the last few weeks and um, there have been numerous um, conversations that we've had here at Red Wing with clients and prospective clients regarding short-term absenteeism and I read a lot on the internet on social media um, about many managers who are experiencing problems um, managing due to high levels of staff absence now there will be mitigating reasons why that is happening at this time of the year it is full-on bug season um, I think you can safely say uh, we've had norovirus um, literally run through my son's school thankfully we managed to escape it um, but you've also had lots of colds coughs sniffles and of course we've then arrived into party season um, and obviously a number of people will have been absent from work um, due to overindulgence shall we say so it's a real issue for all employers and obviously today we're talking to the childcare sector it's an issue particularly that you feel um, unlike other sectors say like finance and, and insurance who, um, for whom the work can sit in the tray for someone to return. Um, in your industry, obviously, it's, it's, it's critical due to ratios um, and ensuring the quality of your provision. So, you know, like many managers, it's, it's an important thing for you to manage. And today we're going to talk about one technique that you could use to help you manage short-term absenteeism. So without further ado, let's have a little look at one of the things that you could use, which is the Bradford factor. So the Bradford factor, invented in Bradford, amazingly enough, this measures spells of absence. And a spell of absence is an occasion when someone is absent from work. So if they were off work for a week, then, um, then that would be one spell. So in this example, Betty loses a week through an ingrowing toenail. That's the one spell. Georgina loses five days, also a week, but she loses it on five different occasions. And that would become five spells. The theory here being that obviously somebody who is losing more spells in a period is more of a problem to the manager than somebody who has fewer spells of absence. So if you think of this in the course of a year, if you've got a member of staff who's having 12 absences of one day, that is going to be far more disruptive for you as a manager than having one employee who loses 12 days in one spell. Now, many of you will be using the percentage absenteeism um, score in order to measure absence currently which is perfectly reasonable but the problem with that is that 12 days lost in the period of 12 months would be the same number of percentage points should it be for the person who's lost it in 12 occasions of one day or one occasion of 12 days so the Bradford factor equation which is the equation you need to know to use Bradford factor is the number of spells multiplied by the number of spells multiplied by the total number of days lost. So we abbreviate that to being S times S times D. And that gives you Bradford factor points. Um, and in many situations, points means prizes. In this case, higher the points, the more the problem you have with that person's attendance. So two examples here. Betty works five days a week, so works full time, and has had one spell of absence for the period being assessed. Now this obviously period being assessed can be entirely up to the manager's discretion. Many managers will go back three months, six months or 12 months. So spells times spells times D will be one times one times five equals five points. Her colleague Georgina, she has had five absences each of one day each. So she has had five spells. So spells times spells is five times five times the total number of days lost, which is five gives her 125 points. So both of them have lost five days off in the period being assessed, but as you can see, Georgina's points are far higher than Betty's. And what you can then do with this is to use a plotting device. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch from the PowerPoint presentation to show you our spreadsheet um, that we use here at Red Wing that you can get your hands on, and I'll tell you how at the end of this webinar. So if I move to show you our spreadsheet, so let me move across what you can look at. 
So you should be able to see um, a chart and some um, uh, columns with different headings at the top of the columns. So you can have 19 employees in this example. We could obviously have more. You then put the number of spells that they've lost in this column and the number of total number of days in this column. Um, and when you do, the maths works it out. So say employee six works here. She's had three spells and in total has lost nine days. That will give that person a score of 81. Now, the reason why this is useful is because you don't need to have names on this to be able to identify who is um, the different um, individual employees. You could give everybody a number and you could say to somebody who you were talking to, you're number 17 on this um, chart. So this is you and this is where you compare to the others that work in this nursery. Um, and you can see, obviously, some people have got naught um, and somebody in lucky number four has got a thousand. Um, now let's put somebody in in the 600s, somebody in the regions. Um, so let's say that somebody has had eight spells of absence and has lost 10 days. Okay, so with this spreadsheet, the, what you can actually do is once you've plotted everybody, is you can have what we call three conversations. So I would be having a conversation with the people down the bottom. So these are the people for whom their attendance is excellent. They have good levels of attendance in the nursery. They're clearly um, the sort of person who's committed. They are um, doing everything they can to reduce the number of occasions in the year that they're off. Um, you probably know who these people are in your setting. You, the people that you can rely upon to come in, who make the effort who, if they need to do something, um, if they need to swap a shift, then they're going to have a chat with their colleagues and see who they can swap with. And they've probably made the arrangements before you even know about it. They're the conscientious, what we call thinking performer. Then you've got a conversation with the folks in the middle. Now, having a conversation with the folks in the middle is to say, look, your attendance, um, you know, is, is, is a concern to us. Your, your, your Bradford Factor points are a concern. They're heading in the wrong direction. They're heading northbounds. Um, we'd like, obviously, you to head it southbounds um, and to do something about reducing the number of spells of um, absence that you have in the period in question. We need you to work on your attendance. Now, you could be having that conversation um, semi-formally through supervision. You could be having it through one-to-one. -one. Um, you could be having it through um, disciplinary, through a verbal warning for, for many nurseries and for many employers verbal warnings fall outside of the formal procedures as they should because they're not recognised by ACAS now as formal warnings. Um, and you could be saying to somebody, look, this needs to improve. If it doesn't improve, if it gets worse, then we'll be speaking more formally in the future, uh, which is obviously consequential assertion. This then leads to a third type of conversation. You'd have having a conversation with the folks that are up here. So if you've got folks up here who, you know, you've got one conversation with people down here, one for conversation with people in the middle, and another conversation for people who are up the top. You're saying to these people, your absence is too high. Now, again, you'd use normally the formal disciplinary procedure to deal with um, absenteeism that is too high um, through down reasons for, of conduct. So somebody who is choosing not to attend work regularly and obviously um, capability for someone who for whom they have um, an issue that means that they can't attend work regularly. So capability, remember, is can't do, disciplinary is won't do, and you have those two formal procedures, well, I hope you do, in your day nurseries to enable you to have those two formal conversations. So a formal conversation about someone's attendance will often be, we need you to improve your attendance, and we're gonna give you, um, obviously, um, a warning as to what might be the next stage if your attendance doesn't improve. So you could be having a conversation with people up here. Now then, you're probably saying, Imogen, where is our example nursery points? Well, we do have some examples. Um, that's an example of a, of a nursery. We do have some examples and there are parameters and, and if you like, Bradford factor um, boundaries or whatever you want to call them, where people say, if you've got this number of points, it's this conversation and this number of points equals this kind of warning. Now, there's a very good reason why we here at Red Wing do not advocate this response. There are the two reasons, actually. One reason being that you will find if you have um, published in your 
absence procedure because that's where it would live that this number of points will result in this conversation there will be people for whom that is right okay so that's the target make sure that in the period you fall below that target and no conversation will happen but you can still be absent so you know it's kind of almost saying this is the acceptable level of absenteeism in this nursery so you know we ultimately can work up to that level before this conversation happens and for some people yeah quite happy to get a written warning over my attendance so that's the number of points that i'll be looking to um, achieve or to get to now the other reason why it's not a good idea is because the way i would describe it is the tail wagging the dog you have those published procedures those published scores and you're telling um, your employees this is what will happen so it is completely um, avoiding the ability for management to decide what is fair and appropriate now in HR we have to be consistent that is the key message so if you are not using um, those scores then you do need to make sure you are not um, if you like singling somebody out so you're deciding what conversations you're having based on data that you've collected at that point in time. Well, that's not singling anybody out. If you're in that data position, at that point in time when we do the scoring, that is why we're having this conversation with you. Um, but if you have a situation that means you cannot take into account mitigating factors, that is not good HR. So, you know, if you've got a system that says, right, okay, you've had 300 points, therefore, regardless of why you've been off, regardless of the circumstances that led you to have those number of spells, may it be misdiagnosis or um, you know somebody struggling to come into work because of deadlines that need to be met um, even when they were not fit which then resulted them to be back off again which equals more than one spell if you do not have those mitigating factors you may find yourself disciplining somebody um, without any sort of um, option for you to intervene or to do things differently against natural justice and you might find yourself taking somebody through a procedure that in, so it destroys the relationship between the employee and the employer and causes you more problems down the road, which is why we do not advocate it. We would rather you looked at the data that you've collected as a manager and make decisions about the conversations you feel are appropriate and fair to have based on the information that's in front of you. Oh dear, I think I should breathe. <laughs> so I'll be off sick at this right? Um, so you do need to make sure that your Bradford factor is something that you've talked to your staff about and you can do that through staff meetings you can do that through supervisions you can tell them that you're using the bradford factor in order to assist you as a tool to manage absenteeism it's not going to replace management it's not going to do it for you but it will be a tool that will help you and um, everyone would agree that bradford factor is a fair system because it takes in consideration spells it doesn't penalize people with particular um, conditions or disabilities um, obviously, you don't include pregnancy related absence in any of your absence management um, uh, techniques, whether it be Bradford Factor or otherwise. Um, to do so wouldn't be correct. But, you know, ultimately, people do like the Bradford Factor because it is seen to adjust the um, analysis, if you like, to those who are clearly having a large number of spells of absence in the period and therefore causing the manager um, the most to work in terms of. Um, managing their absenteeism. So if you want to get your hands on our spreadsheet so that you can do your calculations yourself and you can then print off this sheet um, for your day nursery, just drop us um, a line, um, put in the comments an email address that we can get in touch with you and we can email it across to you. If you prefer not to put your email address into um, Facebook and who would um, you can DM us and we will take that information and again look after it and to send it across to you and you know ultimately we hope that that will be of use um, and in any way if you like some help with any aspect of managing HR in your day nursery or preschool you can get in touch with us um, let me move that across <laughs> Do, 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 do. Here we go. There you go. So you can get in touch with us. Um, 01527 909 436 is our phone number. You can speak to one of our HR consultants on that number, or you can email one of the team or visit us on our website. Um, we hope you find this useful information um, and best of luck managing absenteeism in 2020. If you need any assistance, you know where we are. Take care.